So from kooky bike cultural things like coffee outside, safety pizzas, to basket packing, or to larger industry trends like 650B and subcompact cranks, uh, this channel has its finger on the pulse. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my 2021 predictions and trends to watch in the future. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, we're all about the non-competitive side of cycling, riding party pace and living the supple life. So first, some COVID related predictions. We've spoken to a couple of brands and it sounds like bike availability is going to be spotty at best. In 2020, we saw an influx of people buying all the bikes. In 2021, many of the incoming bikes are gonna be snatched up as well, with some brands having their stock well spoken for all the way into the summer. I think this is going to affect some releases. Some models may not come out just because of availability. All that to say that if you have your eyes on a bike, you should probably buy it now or sooner than later. Or like many people, you're gonna to have to start looking at the used market. So things like Craigslist, uh, eBay, there are also less sketchy options like the Pros Closet, which sells used bikes that have been worked on and have a warranty. They also tend to be on the nicer end of the spectrum, so you're not going to find your Huffy or Magna Special at the Pros Closet. In terms of the event space, my feeling is that with the slow uh, rollout of the vaccine and potentially new variants of COVID coming out, that it's going to be another down year for events. Some may occur, but probably not to the full scale that they once were. I think lots of events and tour organizers are gonna have to pivot and try to create a virtual product to keep customers engaged or some kind of self-branded challenge. Again, just to keep those points of engagement so when things go back to normal, whatever that looks like, people will still have brand familiarity with those events. Another thing to keep an eye on is this notion of boutique tours. So a lot smaller, maybe parties of three to four to maybe six at most, probably with people that are already in your pod. There might be some opportunity of guided, very small tour size and highly curated experiences in the near term. Another interesting thing to keep your finger on the pulse of that we saw a little bit of 2020 is that sub $1,000 or $1,000 bike market. I think a couple of years ago, those bikes kind of were just less expensive versions of high-end bikes, but we're starting to see a lot more innovation in that price range. I'm thinking of brands like Poseidon, of State Bicycle Company, of uh, some of the bikes that Marin is putting out. So look for bikes within that sub $1,000 price point to actually be compelling, even for the bike nerd and enthusiast. Following the trend of smaller brands to watch, uh, I think SRAM and Shimano are still not going to trickle down any kind of mullet gearing into more affordable options. And we're going to be looking towards brands like Microshift. Their Advent X component group was one of my favorite accessories of 2020. I look forward to them refining that, maybe changing the road shifter so it does have under the tape routing or maybe even expanding that cassette. Another interesting component group, which I'm going to film their career derailleur in a couple weeks once we move into our new space is S-Ride. It's a new brand that the folks at Mary Sales are importing. And what I have to test is a wide range a rear derailleur that supposedly works with Shimano road shifters for that soon, because that might be a awesome non-hack required alternative if you want mullet gearing on a drop bar bike. I think another cool brand to watch is Archer. They've come up with a electronic shifting system that you can retrofit to any rear derailleur you currently have and basically turn any bike into an e-shifting bike. It works with a servo motor that you put on the chainstay and also a smart app that really fine tunes uh, the gearing and the cable pull. With, with that one set up, you can set it up to run eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12 speeds. And the best part is the whole system costs a third of the price of a SRAM access rear derailleur hoping to test one of their e-shifting kits in 2021. I think 2020 was the year when gravel went full on roadie. It seems as if geometry in the gravel bike world has kind of settled on either an endurance road or some kind of modified cross geometry. There were a few outliers like the chamois Hagar that, that didn't adapt the typical roadie inspired uh, gravel geometry. But I think for the larger brands, they're just gonna treat gravel now as the extension of road. So yes, we're gonna see more arrow 
gravel bikes, maybe a, a lightweight climbing gravel bike in the future. And very slowly, all the utility and mounts are gonna disappear. And once again, we're just gonna have road bikes, I guess. That said, it's not all doom and gloom. There are a couple brands to take a look at. Uh, one of them is the house brand of Analog Cycles. They're gonna be coming out with their version of a gravel slash uh, off-road touring bike. I think Kona is doing some interesting things with their Libre line. Uh, you know, I test rode the aluminum version and that's one of the, the handful of bikes that were designed purposely around a shorter stem and a wide drop bar. I think that's gonna be a sub-trend that we're gonna see maybe in the more adventure gravel space. And speaking of adventure gravel, we're definitely gonna see more of a schism between performance gravel, the people that are all into the events and, and racing and what have you, and gravel that is more about exploration and touring. So in some ways, I think we've passed that magical phase where a gravel bike was a do-it-all bike. We're gonna see a lot more splintering in the future. And speaking of splintering, I think we're gonna see some brands deviate from this kind of now established gravel geometry, and in particular in the area of the chainstay. I have my eye on a few brands that are kind of pushing that chainstay back because it does add a lot more smoothness and stability and comfort. Doesn't feel like the speediest thing on the block. So I think a lot of the bigger brands like Attract or Specialized are probably gonna stay away from that. But brands like Richie, this small builder called May Mayhall, Mahal, Analog Cycles, you know, Rivendell, and even to some extent Kona, we're gonna see some tweaks in the rear end geometry. And so I'm calling it long chainstays are the new tucked in 2021 and beyond. For tires, 2020 saw 48, 50 millimeter tire size codified as kind of the new 35 millimeter. But I think on the bleeding edges, we're gonna see 700 by 55 for the new, new tires. And also an interesting resurgence in 26 inch. Renee Earth has come out with some interesting tires on both ends of the spectrum. And if we know anything about Jan, he's always pushing the envelope. It's only a matter of time for the industry to follow up. I'm personally really interested in the 26 inch tire size. I think as a shorter rider, it makes perfect sense. I think the mainstream bike industry media will poo poo it because you know it's slower than 700 because 700 is just the fastest wheel size. But for those that aren't concerned with that and want kind of more flexibility in terrain or want a wheel size that's more proportioned to them if they're shorter than say like 5'9", then 26 inch is a super viable option and I'm really excited to see what's gonna develop uh, in that old new tire size. So you're hearing it here first, 26 inch is a new 650B. And lastly, what about bike fun? I think the enamel mug dangling off of a saddlebag, that's like, so 2019. I think the hip new dangle of 2020 and beyond is actually the humble reflector. We saw the safety pizza come out on the market a couple years ago. People got super excited about that. Now we've got these super cute uh, puffy triangles from the folks at Blue Lugs and lots of other makers domestically are starting to jump on that trend as well. Waxwing has come out with their own version of the safety triangle. PDW has a, a fun and quirky safety uh, pendant you can hang off the back. So I think safety flags or safety something is gonna be the new enamel mug. So those are the trends I'm personally interested in and that I'm going to be watching closely. What do you guys think? Are there any hot new new trends that you guys are stoked about? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know. What do you guys think of my picks? I'm sure you're typing away already. I can hear it. If you like this content, you know what to do. And as always, keep the supple side down.